Welcome back. In this video, we'll be cutting out the hardwood components using the Shaper Origin. And these long boards is exactly where the Shaper Origin shines. I purchased one inch rough cuts of Tule lumber in random widths. The lumber yard had two 19 inch wide boards, which will have a special use in our project. The lumber yard planed one edge and surfaced the boards down to 7 8 inch thick, taking 1 16 inch off each surface. We loaded the boards in the armada and drove home. The 170 board feet of sapili should be more than enough for frames 1 through 13. I planned the cuts in Shaper Studio, here showing the inside cuts for the guide holes. And we head out to the workshop. As before, the first step is to lay out the shaper tape. But this time, I'm not putting the shaper tape on the board that I'm going to cut. Instead, I'm using the 19 inch wide boards to set up a workspace template. I space the tape 4 inches apart and add an extra strip near the board I'm going to cut for improved accuracy. I use double stick tape to hold the board I'm going to cut in place. I scan the work surface, create a new grid by defining the X and Y axes. and import our design from Shaper Studio. Next, I position and place the design such that the desired part is within the cutting surface. Now we're ready to cut. I complete the Z-Touch with my quarter inch by one inch long bit. The cutting process is the same as we use with the plywood, only we'll use five passes to cut through the 7 8 inch Sapili hardwood. Note that with a quarter inch diameter bit, you can cut one quarter inch depth with each pass. I just chose to cut 0.2 inches. After cutting out the first part, I delete the design and then re-import and position it to cut the next part. I like to cut the guide holes first using auto pass. This being my first frame component, I wanted to ensure that the dowel would fit the board and the frame construction board. Over time I learned that using a new bit and higher RPMs, the Shaper Origin cuts much more easily. With the completion of each frame component, I move down the board, reload the design, and cut the next frame part.
Perhaps my biggest time savings was to write the part numbers on the boards with a pen. This simple change eliminated the need to change bits and redo the Z-Touch after every part. And because I'm not cutting through any shaper tape, I can simply move the board down and start on my next cut. As you can see, I was able to cut nine parts out of this single 10 foot long board. When complete, I place a new board. I do not need to rescan the surface, I simply identify the X and Y axes to create a new grid. To keep track of the parts that have already been cut out, in Shaper Studio I change the plan from an outside cut to a guide. Notice that the setup and the cutting method remain the same for the larger parts. I just use a wider board to fit the full frame component. Before I forget, I'm going to go back and cut the guide holes. As I publish this video, I've cut about one third of the total frame components, and I've used 50 board feet of the Sapili. I'll cut the remaining boards off video, and when complete, I'll publish a short video of some time and money saving tips. Till next time, cheers.